Number 1. The abortion pill and the morning after pill are two very different things. While the abortion pill makes a pregnancy stop growing, the morning after pill and other types of emergency contraception prevent ovulation from occurring, Torres explains. If you've already ovulated, emergency contraception can't do anything to stop you from getting pregnant. The only exception is the copper IUD, which works by creating an inflammatory reaction that's toxic to sperm, which is why it's the most effective form of emergency contraception. It's important to know that there are currently laws on the books making it hard for doctors and clinics to get the abortion pill, thereby reducing people's access to it. Depending on where you are, the medication is not easily found in hospitals and not easily accessible in clinics, Torres says. If you want to obtain a medication abortion, your first step would be to call a clinic, like Planned Parenthood, and ask if they have the medicine or can access it, Torres says. Even if they don't, they should be able to refer you to somewhere that can better help you. Depending on your relationship with your primary care physician, you may also call them for guidance. At your appointment, the practitioner will confirm your pregnancy and probably perform an ultrasound to see how far along you are. They'll ask about your medical history and which medications you're currently taking, Weber says, before giving you the pills you have to take and explaining when and how to take them, and what to expect. Number 2. Medication abortion works by stopping the progress of a pregnancy, then helping your body flush it out. The abortion pill is actually two separate medicines. The first is Mifristone also known as the pill RU486, which starts the process of safely terminating a pregnancy. Mifepristone blocks the receptors for progesterone, which is the principal hormone in pregnancy Torres says. Since progesterone can't do its job to continue the pregnancy, essentially, the pregnancy stops growing. According to the standard of practice, You'll take this medication in the presence of a medical professional, in some states, this is required by law, although researchers are currently testing the logistics and safety of getting abortion pills by mail. Then you'll get the second medicine, misoprostol, to take at home 24 to 48 hours later. Misoprostol helps your uterus expel the pregnancy. Depending on when you take it, you may already have started to experience bleeding and cramping as your body realizes the pregnancy is no longer progressing. Like in a miscarriage that happens without the aid of medication, the body will start to cramp and push out a pregnancy that has stopped growing Torres says. To ensure it's done safely, we add misoprostol so the risks of heavy bleeding and infection are reduced. The abortion pills can cost up to $800, depending on where you are and where you're getting them, says Planned Parenthood. Different clinics may have funds to help you out, Torres explains. Number 3. From start to finish, the abortion should take around two days to be complete. Starting from the time you take the second pill, it usually takes up to six hours for the abortion to be completed, Torres says. So the whole process should be about a few days, during which time you may expel big blood clots or tissue as the pregnancy aborts, Planned Parenthood says. It's good to rest while all this is happening, if possible. Most women prefer to stay at home for the first few hours after taking the second set of medicine, so we'll often talk with them about their schedules to figure out a good time Weber says. And after the abortion, you may still experience bleeding for up to four weeks. Number 4. The abortion pill is not dangerous. A lot of my patients ask me about safety, and the abortion pill is very safe Weber says. So is abortion in general. 
fewer than one woman dies in every 100,000 legal abortions performed by a professional, including medication abortion, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's abortion surveillance data. For context, 15.9 women died per 100,000 live births in 2012, according to the CDC's most recent pregnancy mortality data. For those numbers, giving birth is about 14 times more deadly than abortion. The incredibly small risk of dying from an abortion rises the longer someone is pregnant, and since medication abortions are only advisable up to 10 weeks along, that makes them even safer. In fact, serious complications requiring hospitalization occur in less than 0.4% of patients who get medication abortions, according to Gutmarker Institute. Number 5. Although they are safe, medication abortions come with unpleasant side effects. Beyond the bleeding and cramping, you may also experience nausea. We provide medications to help control cramping, like ibuprofen, martyrin, or Advil to help with cramping Weber says. Your doctor or nurse practitioner may also offer a treatment like Phenagan or Zofran to deal with nausea. She also recommends having a heating pad at home, you can buy one at a pharmacy, pads to deal with the bleeding, and confiding in a friend, family member, or partner whom you trust and can stay with you. Lastly, Torres says Netflix or some other form of entertainment can be supremely helpful. Number 6. Usually, a medication abortion works completely. If not, you may need follow-up care ASAP. There are a few signs that you should reach out to a medical practitioner during your abortion, according to Planned Parenthood. You need their input if you're soaking through more than two maxi pads an hour for two or more hours in a row, passing clots for two hours or more that are larger than a lemon, your abdominal pain is still severe after taking OTC painkillers, you have a chills and a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher the day after the abortion, your nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea lasts over 24 hours, you're dealing with strange smelling discharge or you think you're still pregnant. You should also reach out if you're not starting to feel better each day after the abortion. Feeling sick, having abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, or weakness, more than 24 hours after taking misoprostol could be a sign of serious infection Planned Parenthood says. When originally dispensing the medication, your medical practitioner should provide a phone number where you can reach someone 24-7 if you have questions or concerns about the abortion, Weber says. Number 7. Even if everything goes as it should, you'll have a follow-up appointment a week or two after the abortion. Just like you'd attend a follow-up appointment for a C-section, IUD insertion, or hysterectomy, you'll go to one after an abortion. Torres says. Your doctor will make sure the abortion was complete, and if it's not, you may need an additional procedure called a dilation and curettage, which removes tissue from the uterus. If you didn't already discuss it at your original appointment, at your follow-up, you can also talk to your doctor about when you can either start or resume your birth control method of choice. Number 8. You should never ever get the abortion pill online or in some other way without a doctor or nurse practitioner's input. Obtaining the abortion pill without the guidance of a medical practitioner is dangerous, just as I would say obtaining depression medication without the guidance of a medical practitioner is dangerous Torres says. You could do yourself a lot of harm by not having a proper evaluation. A medical professional is the only one who can determine whether the abortion pill is right for you. Even if you aren't currently pregnant, Torres says it can be smart to figure out what you do in case of any accidents. It's always best to know what your options and resources are before you have an emergency she says. 
I would highly recommend people at least contact Planned Parenthood or a healthcare professional to ask questions and have a plan in place, because birth control can fail. You want to know as quickly as possible which options and resources are available to you.